Hey there, welcome back to the Dad Labs. I'm Daddy Clay. And I'm Daddy Brad. Today we're gonna to talk about a subject that's dear to our hearts, the interweb. It used to be that you had to teach your kids about the computer and the internet, but not anymore. Now a large multinational corporate conspiracy implants a chip in each baby's brain that allows them to know more about tech than their parents from the get-go. At least it sort of feels that way, but it could be true. You know, and keeping up with technology is harder than keeping up with a donkey at a dirt derby whatever that means. So today we're gonna walk you through our, our favorite bookmarks, all the sites we like to see with our kids. And then we're gonna lay out some best practices as well as talk about some web security software that will help you keep your kids away from sites like the ones that Daddy Clay goes to here at the office. Like what? Like TechCrunch? I mean, you know. You know what I'm talking about. CNN.com? <laughs> I mean, what are you talking about? Like dirt Derby. Your kids are gonna see you on the computer. And they want to be like you. Well, at least until they reach puberty. By the time they're four or five, they can manipulate a mouse and also interact with these websites. A good place to start with young kids may be one of the portal sites. Uh, we like Kid Grid, Kid Sites, or even Ask for Kids. Now, the nice thing about these sites is they've gathered, screened, and organized lots of websites for kids. Now, it's people driven, so the scope may be somewhat limited. And you may have different taste from these screeners. They may like different things than you do. But it's a good place to start, and it's plenty safe. And there are destination sites you can go directly to, like uh, independent game site bonus.com. And there are other sites affiliated with major brands, like Nickelodeon, nickjr.com, pbs.org, and also Webkins. So, starting with bonus.com. Now, this game site has got a wide variety of games, and the playability here is really good. They're, they're fun enough that maybe the adults would want to join in with the younger kids. The problem is that there's also tons of pop-up, spammy ads everywhere. So, I feel a little bit uncomfortable recommending the site for kids. Too, too spammy. The Nickelodeon sites, like Nick.com and NickJr.com, have good playability. Some of the games are free, but others you have to pay for and all of them are tied to a television show. I think the clear winner here has got to be pbskids.org. Although there's also some television show tie-ins here, there's a nice variety, a good mix of games. They've got games, you've got coloring activities, you've got music activities. It's a nice wide variety. Here, the halo of the PBS brand is backed up by solid game design. Then there's Webkins. Webkins, the phenomenally popular website for children. It's sort of like Second Life for plushies. Now, in order to play at webkins.com, you have to first purchase this little virtual stuffed teddy bear thingamadoodle. Well, it's an actual teddy bear. Well, I mean, you buy a well, teddy bear. Yeah, you do it online, though. But it's a teddy bear. It's a doggy. It's a dog. Or a cat. Okay, cat, bear, you know, whatever. It's got a code around its neck, and then you enter that code, and then you're in the Webkins world. Yeah, and then say goodbye, because your child is going to spend the rest of their childhood slaving here in the Webkins mines, trying to earn a few dollars so that they can feed their little virtual digital pet and, and of course, provide it with the important widescreen virtual TV set. Maybe a pink bathing suit. Ridiculous crap like that. You get one free year of use of the website with the purchase of your stuffed animal. After that, you gotta pony up. So, there's several dozen nice and friendly sites out there for kids. But how do you keep them away from the three billion or so not so friendly sites? The sad fact is that one in five kids aged 10 to 17 in this country have been sexually propositioned online. Now a little common sense goes a long way. Make sure that your internet connected computers are in high traffic areas of your house. Make sure to tell your kids that parents should do all the registering on websites. And when you assign a screen name to your kid, make sure to use something generic and non-gender specific. Using numbers is fine. Now it's very important to warn your kids never to respond to any type of offensive online communications. And also, if you witness some of this suspicious behavior, you need to tell the folks at the uh, National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. You can find them at missingkids.com. Whoa. That feels weird. So, we laugh all the time. The kids know the technology better than we do. But parents today, we're sort of obligated to geek out, to know the technology, so we can protect our kids. So it's really important that you understand the parental controls on your computer's operating system, and also on your web browser. 
Apple's operating system, for example, allows parents to create a profile for their children, and you can set your preferences in the parental controls. Web browser, exactly which websites they can visit. You have to give permission for each one. Who they send and receive emails to. You can even password protect some of the words in the dictionary. Now this approach to monitoring what your kid says and does is very labor intensive, but it's worth it. It's a good way to protect them. You know, you can also go all Patriot Act on your kids by installing some internet filtering software. Anywhere between 30 and 80 bucks, you can install software like Guardian Monitor or Net Nanny or Content Protect. Now, the best programs offer blocking and monitoring. The blocking employs a database that essentially won't let your kids get to the bad sites, but there are new bad sites that are popping up every day. So the real Big Brother stuff, that's the monitoring. It sends you messages about where your kids are going, the emails and messages they're receiving. It really lets you know about everything they're doing online. Just how much you want to be into your kid's digital business is something you should probably talk over with your spouse. This is important family policy and should be discussed thoughtfully. These days, it's important for Luddite parents. Like you. Yeah, like me. To really tech up and take care of your kids online. You know, embrace your inner geek. Go online with your kids and keep them safe. It's fun. Well, I think that's about it for us here at the Dad Labs. You have no inner geek. I know, I don't. Your inner geek is dead. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't think, I don't think it was ever born. You're the least digital Dude. person I've yeah. ever known. I did play do you Pong. Know how to do you know? I like that Pong stuff. Do you know how to bloop, turn bloop, bloop, your computer bloop, bloop, on bloop, bloop. without help? Um, Does Troy do that for you every morning? I just never turned it off. Thank you.